Viewer Faux Faubot has an interesting question here for us. Are there any movies you guys have walked out on? I walked out on Fighting from 2009 starring Channing Tatum. Sorry, Fofo. The only movie that I've ever walked out of was the 80s Judd Nelson lawyer comedy, From the Hip. I loved From the Hip. I didn't walk out of it because I didn't like it. I was watching it and I was like, this is not bad. And I'll watch anything that John Bender is in. But my idiot friends... We're all like, this is boring. Let's go to the mall. Fine. The mall again. Back then, I must have laid out at least three fifty for that movie. <laughs> that was big money back then for yes. a teenager. From the hip, I only saw it once, uh, pr probably this exact same night you saw it, because I can't imagine it was out in the theaters that long. I remember John Hurt has this amazing speech at the end of the movie, which you don't even know about, where he talks about the... F which you're not expecting in kind of a light-hearted law room caper. I've never gone back and finished it. I don't know if it's still good. Well, the way you're describing it, it sounds like I should. Yeah, but I like Short Circuit back at that age. You like Short Circuit? At the time. Get out. I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to The Basement. For September here in the basement, we are watching movies from years that we've never watched movies from on this show. And this time, Craig got to pick the movie. The years he had to choose from were 1935 and 2014. Let me just start by telling you the year. 1935! There is one major movie from that year that I haven't seen, and it's directed by a female director, and you know how I love that type of thing. He loves the ladies. But unfortunately, upon further review, Frau Riefenstahl's film was released in Germany a year prior to that, so we will not be watching Triumph of the Will. Sieg don't heil. <laughs> Instead, we'll be investigating another leader who wanted to lead forever, not through the Iron Fist of Oppression, but through immortality with she. She? You don't know she? You don't know she. <laughs> She is one of the most popular novels of all time, sold over 100 million copies. There have been 10 movie versions of She made over the centuries. The first one came out in 1899, directed by Welcome to the Basement alum Georges Millier. And the most recent one, 2001, and that one went straight to video. She, this is going to be real clickbait. <laughs> I was going to choose them or it, but <laughs> the version we are watching tonight was produced by Mr. Marion C. Cooper. He was riding high off the success of The Most Dangerous Game and King Kong, and so RKO Pictures dropped a whole bunch of money on She, and then they lost a whole bunch of money on She. It lost around $180,000, which they probably could have been spending on soup, considering it was a Great Depression. Oh, so this was a flop. Big flop. For years, all prints of this movie were thought to have been destroyed, but one copy survived and was found in, of all places... I love these kind of stories. Buster Keaton's Garage. Oh, okay. Yeah. This stars Randolph Scott. Cary Grant's live-in male companion. And they were not... Okay, well, we'll leave that to speculation. <laughs> This movie takes place in Siberia. Now, if you ever plan to go to Siberia, Matt, you will need a friend, warmth, and protection, and so that's why I give you this. Look at that it's little a, fella. It's a husky! <laughs> oh, aren't you a cutie? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm gonna take this little guy over to the old leather couch with me. Old leather couch? I thought we'd go to the big leather couch to watch the classic adventure story, She! Wait, wait, wait. We're getting a news bulletin in. <laughs> no, it's just the beginning of the movie. Oh. I'm going to figure out who my favorite character is in this movie, and I'm going to name my little dog after, after him. <laughs> a dying old man, John Vincy, is hanging out in his den with his buddy, Horace Holly. Leo Vincy, the old man's nephew, arrives from America. John Vincy is dying. What of? Radium poisoning. I haven't seen the old man since I was a kid. <laughs> when I fed him all that radium. He's been promised the adventure of a lifetime, finding the life-prolonging flame that was discovered by John Vincy's ancestor, John Vincy, 500 years ago. There's a picture of him up on the wall. Leo, you look just like John. Once upon a time, he had an ancestor who was an explorer who went to Russia and never came back, but his wife did. Starving, dying, collapsed at the door of an English merchant. 
He took her in and heard her ravings of hardship and fantastic terror. <laughs> oh, sorry, Uncle. Were you still speaking? <laughs> As she found this place beyond the mountains, and she had this little gold statue with a message on it. Here burns the flame of life. Did you ever hear of a man being burned by x-rays or radium? It's fun. Ever hear of a man being burned by the stock market? You're looking at one. The old man knows that that flame is out there. Holly can't do it alone. Holly can't do a goddamn thing. He's useless. <laughs> They'll find the secret to eternal life. So off they go to Russia. Out on the Siberian tundra, they stop by a yurt. I hate it that we have to stop at Craster's Keep to go up beyond the wall. And they meet this guy named Doug Moore. He lives there with his daughter, Tanya. There's a big stew on the stove, just about ready. Stew? Hey, get me off this stove, it's too hot! They gotta cross the Shuga... Shugal? The Shugal Barrier. No one goes past there and comes back alive. What lies beyond the Shugal? Super Shugal. But he says that he'll help these two guys out by getting them some native guides to take them into the mountains. But, oh, he wants a piece of the action, because he thinks there's gold out there. Take it or leave it. I hope they take it, because if they leave it, that's the end of the movie. <laughs> The next day, they get set to ride out, and Tanya's coming with. Finally, they get to the Shugal Barrier, and they camp by some ice cliffs. You gotta be real careful crossing the Sugar Barrier, especially if you got the diabetes. Mmm, smells good. Listen, I don't much care for girls, but I have a reputation here in Hollywood to uphold, <laughs> so would you like to, uh, go to parties with me? <laughs> they climb up the cliffs, and they discover, frozen in the ice, a saber-toothed tiger. Also, there's a dude wearing western clothes. This is proof that John Vinci made it here at least. But Doug Moore looks at this guy's purse and says, I bet there's gold in there. He starts digging in that ice and he sets off an avalanche. And he gets a different type of gold, a gold called death. This is that landslide that Stevie Nicks is always going on and on about. Yeah. <laughs> As does everyone else in the party, except for the three people whose names you know. But look, there's a hole in the glacier. And inside are these volcanic springs. It's warm. Oh, it's a spa. What they don't know is they're being followed by these natives who may or may not have suspicious motives. Cave dwellers. <coughs> Call that a scream. How did you get cast in this movie? You have one job. Just a minute, Lou. Give them a chance to show if they're friendly. Stab. <laughs> Uh, they're not friendly. Nago da. Thank you. Nago da. And the natives take them back to a big cave. This is what we call the kill room. Holly's an optimist. He says, oh, they're giving us food. They're welcoming us. Nago da. Nago da. Nago da is a very racist word in our language. Sorry, guys. You're about to be sacrificed. This doesn't look so good to me. I hate stomp. Johnny made a boy make a big noise playing in the street. Gonna be a big man someday. Holly's real interested in it, but then he almost gets the big flaming hat put on his head. Luckily, Leo has a gun and there's a big fight. Leo gets conked on the head by a club. It looks like it's curtains for these three, but these other guys show up. They're wearing different clothes and they seem to have authority over these cavemen. Do not be afraid. The guy speaks English. He will not die. You will learn your fate from Hashemote. And they go off to this fabulous palace. And our heroes are presented to the queen. She speaks. She, huh? She speaks. I am Hashemote. She. She who must be obeyed. Hashemote. When she sees Leo, she says, whoa. He looks just like John Vinci, the man that I once loved. John Vinci lived 500 years ago. How old is this woman? I know you. We hung out that one time. She takes Leo away. Meanwhile, Holly and Tanya are put someplace else. But Tanya is suspicious of all this. She goes off and sneaks into the queen's quarters, which really shouldn't be done for someone whose name translates to she who must be obeyed. She says... I can use my healing powers and Leo's head will be fine. He's my lover. Why do you hate me? <laughs> <laughs> because a woman like you once ruined my happiness forever. Holly has a conversation with Hashimotep's chief of staff, I guess he is. Smoke and fire. Do you worship the flame? Of course, oh boy. Is that code for are you gay? <laughs> 
No, no. You smoke pot. Oh, oh yeah. You worship the flame, man. Okay, that works too, yeah. Leo wakes up and he's like, hey, what's going on? Oh, I am going to freak you nasty. You finally came back to me. I've been keeping myself young for you. Who are you? Who, 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 who? I really want to know. Who are you? I say, Tanya, what, what's the meaning of this? <laughs> Your breasts, they're out. There's a trial for the cave dwellers who attacked our heroes. Leo points out his assailants. They shall be put to death. Leo says, no, don't put him to death, have mercy. And she says, yes, I once heard of a man in Jerusalem who took mercy on people. I won't kill them. Leo leaves, and she orders all of them to be killed. Tanya keeps causing trouble. Leo, please don't go to her. And so the queen's like, we have to just send them on their way. It's just going to be a lot easier that way. Hey, can I talk to those men that you didn't kill? I just wanted to thank them. <laughs> She takes Leo into a sacred chamber. Look, on this pedestal, there's the corpse of your ancient ancestor. I killed him in a jealous rage because he fell in love with another woman. And so I waited. Waited for a bridegroom. And finally, my love has arrived. Holly, <laughs> can you ask him out on a date for me? Holly, it was I, myself. <laughs> I saw myself lying there. Craig. You and I are watching this movie together. No, it cannot be. Leo tells Tanya and Holly to leave. Only he can see the magical flame. They think, oh, you're freezing us out. Now you're going to have immortality and we get bupkis. Don't lose your head. Use it. I read that off of a motivational poster in a high school guidance counselor's office. I hope you follow my advice. Also, hang in there. Leo. You know, it's Leo. I, I, I've been ignoring it this whole time, but I'm kind of getting sick of it. Leo. Tanya says, well, what about love? What's the use of living a thousand years if you're going on being cruel and selfish? You're not tempted as I am. Think of it. Never to grow old. Never to feel age. Can't you read the conflict on my face? No. Why not? <laughs> Tanya and she are really getting in hot... Uh, arguments about leaving. Tanya doesn't want to leave. There's going to be a sacrifice in the Hall of Kings tonight. Instead of sacrificing that nobody, why don't you sacrifice this Tanya? You tell Leo that she left easy peasy. All sacrifices look the same, particularly to newcomers. It's time for the sacrifice. Tanya is bound and gagged, and there is a fabulous dance routine. Oh, it's the Mr. Roboto video. I haven't seen this in years. <laughs> You're wondering who I am. Secret, secret, I got a secret. A man, oh man, I can. Secret, secret, I got a secret. <laughs> There's a little bit of dancing. There's a little bit of drumming. All the stuff you expect out of quality ceremonies. Loosely translated, that means, Hello, Cleveland! <laughs> Are you ready to rock and roll? One person's brought in, she's not dancing. That girl they're bringing in, what does she do? Her wrists look familiar. And then they realize that thinly veiled veil is not hiding the fact that that's actually our friend Tanya. He grabs her, he pulls out his gun and starts shooting people. They run off, it's a daring escape. Conan! Oh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. He burned up a Roboto. <laughs> They need to jump over a chasm. It's exciting. They turn a corner and there's Hashimotep. She says, I took a shortcut to get here. Listen, you want to see the flame? I'll show you the flame. And you know what, Tanya? For being such a brat, I'm going to stay young and you can stay here, hang out, and just grow old. She steps into the flame. That's that flame! Your eyes, baby. Whoa, she looks a lot older but she doesn't seem to realize that she's getting older. Let me try this again. Your cheeks will wrinkle. I, I had the flame of life set in reverse. I, <laughs> my, my fault. I'll, I'll just switch the set. I'll just turn. <laughs> why, why is it not working? <laughs> and she gets older and older. Your limbs will wither. You will turn into the Crypt Keeper until she's a dying old woman. Would either of you like a Werther's original? <laughs> Where did my doilies go? <laughs> Bill O'Reilly has a lot of good ideas. <laughs> and she's going to die now. Leo says, let's get out of here. And suddenly they're back home. How did we get home? <laughs> that doesn't matter. <laughs> they wrote a book about their experience. 
Why, no one could believe it unless they'd been there with us. So why did we bother writing it down? <laughs> Immortality is okay, but if you don't have it, you may as well have love. Leo and Holly would continue to have a Jules et Jim type relationship <laughs> with Tanya for the rest of their lives. What's the use of living 1,000 years if you're cruel and selfish? You're living 1,000 years. You don't have to be nice to people. That's the lesson of the picture of Dorian Gray. Once you're immortal, this is all nothing around me. I can just tear it all down and start over. That's why it's best we're not immortal. It's best you're not immortal. I'm a very nice person because I know I'm going to die someday. Well, let's talk about this movie. I'm pretty sure that both of us found it to be rather dull, but the last 20 minutes are really great. It's exactly the movie I thought it was going to be. It was going to be generally a bad movie with moments of greatness to the point of awesomeness. And I mean awesomeness as in bringing about awe. Last 20 minutes had some real style and real excitement. You had a lot of good set design going on, but you had these kind of mannequins walking yeah, around. Yeah, the rest of the movie needed that sense of personality. Speaking of not having a personality, Randolph Scott. Randolph Scott. Randolph Scott makes Joel McRae look like Louis Armstrong. <laughs> That's how white he is. And Joel McRae was the person they wanted for this movie. And think about how fun that would have been. I think Joel McRae would have brought something to this that it currently lacks. Yeah. The set design in this was great. The avalanche scene is mm -hmm. really well done, but the whole thing is just a little too mannered. Indiana Jones, this ain't. No, it looks like it's going to become Indiana Jones when they're fighting the mugwumps or whatever they are, the bad guys. But... It passes as soon as he gets knocked out with one blow to the head. At the trial scene, she's dressed up just like the evil queen. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Disney modeled that queen on this queen. Oh, yeah, she looked just like her. Mm -hmm. Well, at least this film has a legacy. What other legacy do you think it has? I think it probably influenced adventure movies to come mm -hmm. that ended up being better. Movies like this, while maybe they're not very good in themselves, they illustrate what can be done. Yeah. And then later on down the road... Better movies, take that and run with it. Helen Gehagen plays our lead character. She might be the reason why they thought that there were no more copies of this movie because she started a career in politics and as she was running for office, she tried to get them all destroyed. Oh. Yes, this was her only movie. The movie bombed and so she was kicked out of Hollywood. She ended up becoming U.S. representative. But then she lost the Senate race to a young Richard Nixon. And she was the person who coined the nickname for Nixon, Tricky Dick. Also, she had a lengthy affair with Lyndon Baines Johnson, which mm. is best not to think about. Probably the aspect of this film that is the most dull is the title. Yes. Now, you and I are a couple of clever fellows. I'm sure that we could brainstorm a couple of more exciting titles for this movie. Uh, the Titania of the Tundra. The Eternal Flame. Sexy Old Woman. Come on, I'm talking about <laughs> actual titles. Why wouldn't that be a title? She Who Must Be Obeyed. She Who Must Be Obeyed. That's a great title. Who wouldn't want to see that movie? I've looked at all the characters, and I think I've found out what I'm going to name my little husky dog. What? He may not be the most likable character, but he's certainly the cuddliest character. So this is Holly. Holly? Yeah. Anyway, we watched She, and if you haven't seen it, check it out. Well, hitch up your sled dog team and mush on over to our website, welcome to thebasementshow.com. We have all of our episodes, we have an updated season four episode guide, and we have a PayPal donation button. You can donate a dollar or two to support this show. And we really appreciate our recent donors. Like Adrian, who says, thanks for all the inspiration and joy you guys have given me. Regards from Stockholm. Ah. Sean, Jack, Colin. A big Phantom of the Paradise shout-out from Winnipeg. Hey. Netboy Limited, who says, I want my $2. If you understand that reference, you're probably about my age. <laughs> Richard, since introducing the show to my wife, it has become one of our favorite programs to watch together. Please give a shout-out to Shay. Hi, Shay. Hey, Shay. And Karul, who says, best wishes from Ireland. Slangofoil, which is bye for now in Irish. I'm right. sure pronounced much differently. And, of course, I have to thank our monthly donors. They've set up rolling monthly donations. They donate a certain amount every month. Patricia, Edward, Corey, Kyle, Stephanie, Sierra, George, Danielle, Joe, Michael, Brian, Steve, Lee, Michael, Jacqueline, David, Joshua, Jonathan, Merlin, Tristan, Kevin, Alex, Abraham, Patrick, Maurizio, Dan, Robert, Sarah, Cody, Abraham, and Alex. Whew. Recently, the basement has been rocked by shocking revelations. You remember Cece 
our darling little girl. We took her in to get fixed and we found out that Cece isn't a she at all. Cece's a little boy. We felt a little dumb about it, but we had taken him to two previous vet visits and they didn't find out either. Anyway, we still call him Cece just because we're used to it, but we've also become quite fond of the name Cecil. So we think that's going to be his full name from now on. I'm going to dip into our mailbag. Good. And we got postcards. This is from Joe on his vacation in Boston. Hey, Boston. I was just out there myself. Tristan from sunny Florida. Oh, nice. From Salt Lake City, Utah. I think it says Janet. I can't quite read the name, but there you go. Donuts. Nick from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Alexander Hauk sent us some DVDs. Oh. Family favorites. Whole bunch of movies there. And Girls, Guns, and G-Strings. Oh. So finally, I can watch a double feature of Cop and a Half and Hard Ticket to Hawaii. <laughs> and now it's time for Seen It. Seen It. Tonight's theme, Seen It at the Theater. Special Q85, Seen It, Wayne's World. Seen It. Seen It. A lot of the catchphrases of Wayne's World really grate on me. All the we're not worthy and party on and whatever. But there's no denying that those characters are hilarious. Oh, yeah. I saw it on the big screen just a couple years ago. I found Mike Myers to be really grating. And he does this thing, which you're not supposed to do as a comedian, which is, I tell you a joke, and then you film someone laughing at it. And then you're like, huh. he's very smug, and he just seems really needy for laughter in that movie. Mr. Sandwich 116 writes, Hey, guys, love the show. Thanks. Please watch the Tarantino classic and one of my personal favorites, Pulp Fiction. Get down, get down. Seen it. I saw it in the theater, and then I saw it in the theater again, and then I saw it in the theater again, which makes it tied with Return of the Jedi for the only movie I've seen three times on the big screen. There's no denying that this is the most important movie of the 90s. What do you think of that? I totally agree with that. We could go on for twice as long as the movie actually is. The ripples of this movie are still being felt today. And it's something that when it came out, you knew you were watching something revolutionary and something that would always be revolutionary. And Tarantino said something after it came out. He said that the smartest career move would be to die. I'm going to make other good movies. I'm going to make other great movies, but I'm not going to make another Pulp Fiction. Well, coincidentally, we just got a letter from Ray, who's 15, and he asks, In 1995, Forrest Gump took home the Best Picture Oscar, beating Shawshank Redemption and Pulp Fiction. Which movie do you believe should have won? Well, I think we've answered that question. Pulp Fiction. Final answer for the rest of my life. Kaiser the Amazing writes, I have seen Saving Private Ryan to the point that I can't stand it. This is a shame because it's such a pillar of cinema history and I find that I can no longer appreciate it. Seen it. Seen it. You know, this may sound like sacrilege, but Saving Private Ryan left me a little cold. Not the battle scenes. The battle scenes are the most impressive battle scenes ever. And this movie deserves its place in cinema history just for that. But the story... I find didn't move me as much as I wanted it to be. The ending I found really melodramatic and didn't really pack that emotional wallop that I wanted it to. You're right. Hey! <laughs> it's, I want to go back and watch it again. I do too. Just to see if maybe there was something wrong with me when I did see it. It didn't seem like the script was there. Right. So, mm -hmm. You know, there were a few good speeches. It should have won Best Sound Editing because... I imagine it the, did. You're sitting in the theater and it re you're going like this. Because mm -hmm. it feels like there's bullets whizzing past you. Yeah. Head. Carly Codras asks, have you seen The English Patient? Ray Fiennes is brutally phenomenal. And hot. Seen it. Yes, he's very hot when he's all burned up. Well, he's not burned up entirely. He's burned up for half the movie. Yeah, but the other half of the movie... He's, he's pretty ins hot. He's yeah. insanely hot, yes. I really, really like The English Patient. Yeah? I saw it in the theater with a date. Mm -hmm. It's a great date movie because it's romantic, yeah. but it's also genuinely moving and it's tragic. I uh, saw that movie with uh, my roommate Sarah and her boyfriend. And at the end of the movie... She was screaming, sobbing. <laughs> the lights were up, and like I'm on this side. What's his name was on the other side, and we're just like <laughs> waiting for her to to get over it. That's seen it, and that's our show. We journeyed into the frozen tundra to watch she. We... She was quite a movie. She was quite a lady. Our theme for next month, of course. Halloween. Halloween. Scary movies. Ah. We're going to be watching two of them. 
What scary movies do you think we should watch? Let us know in the comments. Until then, we will see you in October. Ooh. Oh my god! Oh. Open the door. It, it's me. You know my voice. Come on. Just open the door. No, no, don't play the... <laughs> Just open the door. Thank you. Nagoda.